Hi, Honest Discussioner here. I think before we begin, some shout outs are in order. First on the list is a preliminary shout out to my friend Sisyphus Redeemed, who responded to me on the death penalty and sent a good number of subscribers my way with his recommendation. The extra subscribers aside, a mere recommendation from this man is an honor. From my perspective on YouTube, there's probably no one else better suited to discussing logical problems uh, and morality than Sisyphus Redeemed. Now I say this as a preliminary shout out because I don't know if I'm going to respond to him on the death penalty or not. I don't exactly want to obligate him to make another response or feel like I'm just trying to get this to get more views. I need to give what he said a little bit more thought, but hopefully we'll be able to have a blog TV at some point to discuss this because it's a very important issue. That being said, if you're not subscribed to him, I highly recommend that you go check him out. He is, without a doubt, quite awesome. Now on to a direct shout out uh, is my shout out to BFAD, otherwise known as Big Fat Agnostic Dude, otherwise known as Agnostic Man 77, formerly at least in the latter case. BFAD shouted me out earlier on my video uh, about Ken Ham and how stolen and obtuse he is, and I really appreciate that, and I got some extra subscribers for him, so thank you very much for that, Eggman, or BFAD. I still want to call him Agman. it's a force of habit. Not only is BFAD a really nice guy who has some very important issues that he likes to bring up on a regular basis, but as Tenderreel said, he is incredibly good at cutting through bullshit like a hot knife through butter. And he doesn't need any long-form philosophical statements to do it. He's quite effective. So if you're not subscribed to BFAD, check him out as well. But now on to yet another awesome man. The man that holds the number one slot in my channel recommendation page for at least a year now. The intrinsically incredible Prof MTH. Prof's video from earlier today, or maybe late last night, was about the recent Michigan law that was passed that basically, possibly at least according to some, can legalize bullying on account of moral obligation. Which is to say I'm allowed to bully someone if I feel God has told me to, or if I feel it's my religious duty, or if it's merely my, I feel it's moral to do so, or out of some sort of moral obligation. Or at least that's the word on the street. To me, I don't think I like this law as it stands, but I'll get into that a little bit later. For now, let's just let Prof go over the more controversial part of the law. Indeed, the legislation says the following. This section does not abridge the rights under the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of a school employee, school volunteer, pupil, or a pupil's parent or guardian. This section does not prohibit a statement of sincerely held religious belief or moral conviction of a school employee, school volunteer, pupil, or a pupil's parent or guardian. Now, Prof argues that this law does not go against the Establishment Clause in the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, and I'm not going to disagree with him. For the reasons he mentioned, basically, uh, even I as an atheist can cite a moral reason to uh, express my opinion about something, and this law would cover me just as much as a religious person citing their religious convictions. So religion isn't being favored here, at least. But I still don't like the way the bill is worded. And neither does Prof, to be honest. Now, the wording of this exemption could be tightened up. A tighter formulation of this exemption might be, this section does not prohibit a mere statement of a sincerely held religious belief or moral conviction. I think this would more clearly set off protected speech from bullying. See, Prof doesn't want any unpopular opinions to be silenced, and even if he did, he claims the First Amendment would be there to stop us. And I agree with him on that, and I'm a huge proponent of free speech, I certainly don't want to limit anyone's religious opinions or non-religious opinions. I believe the marketplace of ideas is the best way to go about handling a civilization, and the more open our speech is, assuming it's not threats of violence, but actual ideas about how to progress as a society, all should be welcome. But without the mere words put into the bill in the spot, in the spot that Prof suggests, is it not doing more? Not necessarily, as Prof shows here. And it would comport nicely with another section of the bill that says, quote, All pupils are protected and bullying is equally prohibited without regard to its subject matter or motivating animus. So my question is, which one wins out? 
if you have a bill that says person A is allowed to do something in one part of it, and then in a separate part of it, it says person A is never allowed to do that thing, which part wins out? Can someone cite the first part of the bill that we discussed as a reason to bully someone based on their moral convictions? Or will a judge point to the second part of the bill that we discussed and say that, no, that's going too far. You can't do it with bullying, you just can't have your speech, your non-bullying speech, prohibited. I think that's really the important part of the discussion. Also, I'm a little upset that I've heard this from numerous people and numerous sources, and yet this is the first I've heard of that second part of the bill that we discussed. Media and Democrats seem to have dropped the ball on this one, and that's upsetting if not entirely unsurprising. Well, that's about it. Have a nice day. I'm Discussioner, out.